Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to archive SharePoint list data using Power Automate. If you enjoy Power Automate, Power Apps, SharePoint, Teams, and Power BI videos, feel free to subscribe because we'll be putting out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. All right, so I'm going to show you how to archive your SharePoint data in this video. Uh, we will be storing it into a CSV file located on the SharePoint site. So if I look at my list, we have a bunch of columns here. And let's just say I want to get a daily archive of the end of the day. So let's go ahead and set that up. So I need a place to store my files. You can either store them on the SharePoint site, on your OneDrive, or if you want to like email the archive to yourself, go ahead. I feel storing them into a SharePoint list just works just fine. And just make sure to lock down the SharePoint list permissions. So only a certain number of users can enter the SharePoint document library. So I'm making a document library called Data Archive. I'm not going to show it in the site navigation. I don't want users to go in this archive. I only want myself and the owners of the site to. So we'll store the data files here. So let's navigate over to Power Automate. We will go to New Flow. So you can set this up as a scheduled cloud flow. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. Let's say I want this to run daily. So we will do daily archive of employees. And the reason I'm doing daily is because if you have a SharePoint, you can do weekly, monthly, but I feel daily is a good one because I'm not really worried about storage. And if something happens during the week where I need to look at that specific day, I have an archive of the end of that day. Storage isn't a problem. These files don't take up a lot of space. So I'll have mine running daily and we'll do this at 12 a.m. And I will repeat it every day. So let's go ahead and create it. So we have reoccurrence. So I'm going to get all the items from my SharePoint site. That's just going to be a get items. Uh, marketing. And this is employee data. So employee data. If you have over 100 items in your SharePoint list, you want to go to settings, turn on pagination, and set a threshold that is greater than the amount of items in your SharePoint list. Be sure to do this because if you don't and you have an archive going on, it's only going to grab the first 100 items. So you can have that running for a long time. And then when something happens, the data is missing. You don't know what happened. You can't use the archives. You only have 100 items. And if you had like 500 in the SharePoint list. So be sure to turn that on if you have over 100 items. All right. So we have all the items. Let's go ahead into CSV. So I like using a data operations create CSV table. So CSV files are pretty small and they're quick to run. If I made this an XLSX file, it takes a lot longer to run. And it's a lot more complex to make it that type of file. Just making CSVs works just fine because it can always convert the CSV to an XLSX. Um, if I need to access a specific archive for a day, I will go ahead and use body value for my from. It's going to go ahead and create automatic columns. And the last action is create files. So I'm going to create a file. So since I'm using SharePoint, I am using the SharePoint action here. If you're using something else like OneDrive, you'll want to choose the OneDrive action for creating a file. I'm navigating over my SharePoint site, looking at the folder. So this is in data archive. So the name of the file. So if I have this run daily, I can't just use a static name like archive.csv. Don't forget the extension when you're making these files too. So I can't just use that name because every time my SharePoint tries to make a new file and I already have archive.csv in there, I don't, it's not going to run because there's already a file name in there. And also you want to document what day this archive occurred on. So let's go ahead and click on the FX button. I'll delete what's in the file name. 
and we will go ahead and choose convert from UTC. So I need a timestamp here. Uh, the first parameter in this is UTC now. So I'm going to convert from a UTC time. Power Automate uses UTC time. So since I'm on the East Coast, I need to convert that to Eastern Standard Time. So your second parameter in this is going to be Eastern Standard Time. If you're in a different time zone, uh, you're going to want to look up what you have to actually put into the convert from UTC. Um, if you're like Pacific Time, I'm sure it's Pacific Standard Time. All right, so we have convert from UTC. So now it takes a third parameter, and this is going to be the format. So how I want to format that date. And I'm just going to do month, month, day, day, uh, year, year. So I'm going to do month, day, and year. Make sure your items are capitalized on that, or else she will get the actual minutes. So that looks good to me. Uh, so we got the date. I'll do like an underscore archive.csv. So, and for the file content, I will just do the output CSV table. And that looks good to me. I will go ahead and save this. All right, everything looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and test this. I'll run flow. A real currents, get items, create CSV table. Now it's creating the file. So the file was successfully created. So let's go ahead and navigate over to my data archive. Just click on refresh. And it looks like <laughs> there is an issue. So I use capital D's and capital Y's. And I was supposed to use lowercase. So let's go back and let's go ahead and edit that. Convert from UTC. It's going to be day, day, year, year. Go ahead and save this. Let's go ahead and retest it. And now it will actually work again. So even with all my Power Automate and Power Apps experience, I still make simple mistakes like that. And it just helps you learn. So don't feel bad about making mistakes. Um, that's how you learn things. All right. Go ahead and navigate back to SharePoint. Now we do have the correct date here, the archive.csv. So if I go ahead and open this, open in browser, I see that I have a CSV table of all the items in my SharePoint list. And you're probably wondering why I have these weird data fields in my um, export. That's because if you're using complex columns in SharePoint, choice fields are contained in id and value so it kind of writes down what that field was using this o data type so my job title field was a choice field and each one has an id and a value associated with it so id5 is a database man id1 is database analyst so if you have complex fields in your sharepoint list they will look a little strange here so this is just a very basic CSV export of it. If you want the actual values from the SharePoint list, so in my case, let's say I, in my job title field, I only wanted data analysts or database man to show, that flow gets a lot more complex and I'll make a video on that. It's gonna be a lot longer video because you actually have to look at each column that you have. So in my case, I have a choice field. I have to get the actual value from that and store that into um, a select action and put that into an array and export that array. So it's a lot more complicated. I have a lot of choice fields, people fields. People fields actually contain a lot more values than just the name. You also have the claims, the display name, the picture, the email. So that all gets stored in here. So if you just want a very basic CSV, archive of your SharePoint list, go ahead and use this. It's very simple to set up and you most likely won't have to access your archive as long as you don't have malicious users in your organization. But it's just a good thing to have when you set up a new list, just to have like an automatic archive running in the background. If you look at this list and you need to make a new list for some reason, you have all the data here. 
So I will make another video if you want a actual archive, you know, concatenating these together, separated by a delimiter for a multi-choice field. I'll make a I'll make a long video on how to do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, feel free to like the video, leave a comment if you think this was helpful. If it wasn't helpful, leave a comment and I will do better. And I will catch you guys in the next video.